All right, guys, we are back, and we're going to move into the second part of the bottom end for Project 250R, and we're also going to open up a couple new packages tonight. All right, all right. So we have our bottom end gear right here. The only thing that's missing is the hot rods crank, which is a stroker crank. Um, we have that in the freezer right now because that's going to help us hopefully install that thing. Uh, and if we can't get it in there, um, just sliding it in by hand. We do have a crankcase or a, um, a crankshaft puller. But regardless, everything else is pretty much out here on the table. We got our gasket over here, our transmission, which I've already gone through, made sure everything is in the proper order. We've got our shift forks, our shift drum, our counterbalancer, and we've also got all of the necessary lubricants and everything right here um, with the exception of our crankcase oil. So we're going to open up these packages at the end of the video. So let's get right into it. We're going to start assembling this bottom end. Uh, before we do anything, let's go over all the fluids and lubricants that we're going to be using. All right, so I did add one thing. This was not sitting on the table before. This is our Flex Drive 30. This is what we are going to be running in the transmission. So it's just good to have on hand. Um, if you're going to lubricate anything, aside from assembly lube, it's definitely a good idea to have the appropriate transmission oil that you're going to be running in your engine to get make sure things aren't going in dry. And then, of course, we have some CRC engine assembly lube. This stuff is really nice. Um, you might think that you could just use the regular um, transmission oil to lubricate things. But what's nice about assembly lube is that it's pretty thick and it's going to stay where you put it. So, you know, when you're putting everything together and as the engine sits for a little bit, uh, oils and stuff tend to run and they might not stay exactly where you want them. So this is going to stay put right where you leave it. Now, we've also got Permatex. We're going to be using this on our bolts for the crankcase and um, as well as our dowels. And so uh, this is going to help us out a good bit so that if we are going to disassemble this motor one day, uh, it'll be a breeze. Now we've got two different forms of Yamabond here. We have Yamabond 4 and we have Yamabond 6B. Now Yamabond 4 should work just fine. Um, this is the Yamaha gasket sealer. Uh, it is resistant to gas and that's what's really important when you're building a two-stroke um, because there are surfaces that are going to be lubricated with fuel. So in, up in your crank area, up around here, there's going to be a lot of fuel uh, mixed with your oil to lubricate the crank and whatnot. And if your sealant is not gas resistant, it will slowly eat it away and there's a chance that it could leak. So you want to make sure that whatever kind of sealant you're using, it is gas resistant. Now 6B is very similar to Yamaha to Yamabond 4, but it's a higher heat resistance. Um, a lot of forms and stuff, people say Yamabond 4. I think it would work fine, but I'm going to stick with Yamabond, Yamabond 6B because this is what I used on the Banshee build and I've never had any issues with it. So for this time, we're going to use Yamabond 6B. All right, so I'm going to move the transmission and everything out of the way and uh, we will set up our case half on some wooden blocks and we'll get to putting this thing together. All right, guys, so we have our left case half here. We are sitting on some blocks right here. Uh, the first thing that the service manual tells you to do is make sure that all of your inner races are lubed. I'm going to put just a little bit of lubricant in our uh, bearings as well. So what we're going to use is that CRC assembly lube. Um, you probably could get away with using a little bit of crankcase lube. And then I'm going to grab my um, crankcase out of the freezer and we're going to see if we can pop it in here. Now the reason it's in the freezer is because that will contract the metal. Um, I have not done a 250R before, but apparently they are notoriously a bitch to get in here. Um, in the service manual, Kind of interestingly enough, I do have my climber manual. It's over there. You guys can't see it. Um, they tell you to take it to a Honda dealer and have them pull it in <laughs> because you need special tools. They don't even tell you what the special tools are. Uh, luckily, I know how to do it. Uh, we have a crankcase installer or a crank uh, shaft installer rather, and it's not going to be a big deal. But I do think that's kind of interesting that in the climber service manual, they don't tell you. Um, I know a couple guys were saying to get the Honda service manual, which I do have. It's just an online PDF version. Um, it's just interesting that they don't tell you that in the climber. Whew, wow, this thing is cold. So this is our hot rods crank. The long coned portion goes, goes towards the stator, which is the underside. So let's see if we get lucky here and this thing will drop in. I can't believe how cold this is. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's just going to slide right into place. Now, I do want to make mention, the last thing you want to do is go hammering this thing in because, you know, I think logically a lot of people would just say, hey, you know, why not just tap this thing into place? You don't want to do that because you're going to knock your crank uh, shaft out of alignment. It's really easy to do. What you want to do is go on the other side and we're going to pull it through. Okay, so we have our case flipped over. The crank is hanging down now and we have our crank installer right here. This is a Tusk crank installer. 
uh, comes with a couple different pieces and you'll see as I put it together. Now, this is fairly expensive. Uh, I think it costs about 75 bucks. If you're building bikes frequently or you're typically you know, blowing your bike up and using it a lot, it's probably worth the investment. However, if you don't typically do builds on your stuff, it might actually make sense to go to the dealer and have them pull your crank in because I imagine it would be cheaper than 75 bucks. Who knows? Um, I will have this linked in the description below though if you guys wanna pick one up. So it's easy enough to use and it works for multiple bikes. So we have this little collar that goes over here and then there's different uh, fittings depending on what kind of crank you have. This one is for the 250R. Fits on there nice. And then this pulls up like so. Put this attachment on. So now this is attached to the crank and it can pull. You wanna make sure that your fitting is threaded on as far as it can go, because the last thing you wanna do is jimmy up your threads. So now we're gonna slide this portion on. You just gotta line it up. There's actually a little slot. And now you have these two bars that are gonna rest across our case. And this is actually what this big cylinder is gonna press against. So what we'll do is lay these across the case. You wanna try to pick uh, areas that look strong. If you see any thin parts of the case or anything, probably not the best place to put them. Okay, so right there should be good. Then we have a nut that's gonna thread on. And as we tighten this nut, that's gonna pull the crank and get it right into position. Before you do anything, you wanna make sure that your rod is where it needs to be. If it's somewhere up here, you're gonna risk damaging it when you're trying to pull it through. So you guys can watch as I tighten this down, you'll see this gap start to get smaller. And you gotta keep an eye on that because if you go too hard, you'll probably end up screwing something up. You'll also notice these rods have a little bit of flex in them. So when they start to flex, it's time to stop. So now taking this thing off is just as easy as putting it on. I'm gonna back this nut off. Pull off the sleeve, remove our bars. And we're done. All right guys, coming at you from the top side. So I have the transmission right here. Now I've already gone through these gears and made sure that everything was in order. If you um, don't know how to do that, just get a service manual. It seems scary, but it's really not that hard. It's like Legos, man. You just take it apart, make sure everything is in the right order. All the, um, there's like washers with um, tangs on them. You just wanna make sure everything's going in the right direction and everything. But the cool thing is that the manual has tons of pictures and stuff. And um, you can see right here, this isn't the right page, but the manual is very, very easy to follow. So don't be scared if you have to rebuild your transmission. I did clean these parts up and then I coated them with a little bit of grease. So they're ready to go. Uh, the transmission was in good shape. We're not doing any trans mods on this bike. Um, it's not a crazy strong build. The other thing is some of you guys were saying to have the crank welded. Uh, I did a good amount of research. Uh, for a 310, there shouldn't be any problems with this hot rods crank. Um, I'm not saying that you guys aren't right. I definitely think it's good to spend a dollar to save a dollar down the road so that nothing blows up for, but, um, from what I researched, uh, for the 310, this shouldn't be a problem. The hot rods crank is going to be just fine. So now for installing these gears, um, they need to be kind of meshed together and then put into the case. So it's going to be a little bit cumbersome. Um, it literally says in the manual, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. It says to use a whole bunch of molly denim grease on the end so that your uh, your washers stick to the transmission, the, the gears, so they don't fall off. Uh, so I did put some grease on them. I'll show you this one. You can see the grease in there. <laughs> we'll see how well that holds it on there. And um, I'm just gonna kinda go for it and see if we can get them lined up. And maybe they'll just go right into place because if you guys remember, this counter shaft was a nightmare to get out. And I never actually showed taking it off um, it needed a good amount of heat. I let it sit in penetrating oil overnight, and then I heated it up with a torch, and it did come off. So let's see if we can get this thing to drop in here.
Now I see why that grease comes in handy. So I can actually see that one washer on the end fell off and it's preventing the one shaft from going in to the bearing in a race. Okay guys, take two. I actually pulled the transmission out, installed it, and then now I pulled it out again because I want to show you guys a better way to do it. Um, the manual, like I said, tells you to mesh them together and then put them in. It definitely is easier if you do one at a time. Um, just make sure that you have all your washers and everything in place. So I'm going to take the counter shaft and I will install that first. Now we'll take our other transmission half. We'll slip it in there. And just be gentle, make sure to hold that bottom gear. Got it in there. And then we'll take, I think this is first gear. Slide that on there, thrust washer, and we're good to go. All right guys, so now we're gonna put in our shift forks. So we have three shift forks that are gonna go in. First one we're gonna do goes on this forward shaft. Um, this one is the center shaft, and it is marked with a C on it. And the way that you know you're putting it in the right way is if you go this way, the little stud right here is obviously not facing towards the shift drum because the shift drum goes right here. So you wanna flip it over and make that face where the drum would go. And there is a guide, you'll see it in there, where it sits. So you're just going to put it in place. I'm going to put a little bit of lube on it first. Now we're going to install our shift drum, and this is the center fork. So you want to make sure that this peg lines up in the center groove here. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of assembly lube in here. Now we will take our short shift fork shaft. I'll show you the comparison. Here's the longer one. You can't really mix these up. Um, it doesn't matter which way this goes. A little bit of assembly lube. I like to kind of move things around, make sure that everything's lubricated and nothing is binding as we're doing this. Now we have the left and the right shift fork. So you can see these are labeled as well with L and R. So we're gonna lubricate these and they basically go, this is the left case half. So this is the, that downward would be the left side of the quad. So the left will go on the bottom. And of course you want this peg facing towards the drum and the right will go on the top. Same thing, you want those pegs facing towards the shift drum. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So we'll go ahead and put the one with the L in first. Then we've got our longer shift fork. This side is gonna go down and we'll just kind of fish things through until everything lines up. All right, now that we have the transmission in place, now's the time that you wanna make sure that everything is working properly, not after the cases are back together. Um, so they recommend that you do this with two people. Um, I managed to do it just fine. Basically, you wanna make sure that your transmission is moving and you wanna spin your shift drum and make sure that it can shift through all gears. And how you do that, there's little stoppers. It's gonna be kind of difficult um, for me to show you guys. Uh, Okay, so this looks like a pretty good angle to show you. So you have your shift drum here and these little grooves are what the uh, shift forks ride in. So what you wanna do is sh spin the shaft, um, not by the gear, you wanna spin it by the shaft. And um, essentially you can see where it stops here. Once that meets the peg on the shift fork, the shift, fork, or the, um, the shift drum is bottomed out. So right there, you're maxed out. Now you just wanna make sure that you can go all the way around and get that, that stopper uh, to meet right here. So if you spin the shaft and work the shift drum, we should be able to get it to spin all the way around. And a lot of times, like I said, guys, it's not easy uh, to do. It's a little bit cumbersome. Just you want to make sure that there's no obstructions and that it can make it all the way around. And I think I've met the stopper. I apologize, guys. This is a little bit difficult to do. 
um, with the camera and trying to make it so that you guys can see. Um, but I think we are maxed out. So I think we're good here. So I'm going to double check this off camera and then we'll move on. Okay, guys, now we got both case halves here. I've already gone ahead and lubricated the inner uh, race of these bearings, put a little bit of assembly lube on the bearings as well. And um, now in putting this transmission in, chances are you probably got a little bit of grease or oil on your case surfaces. Um, so what I want to do is just clean that off really quick. I have a spray bottle here with a little bit of lacquer thinner. Um, we used this the other day when we took the graphics off of the Can-Am. If you guys didn't see it, definitely check that video out. Um, we're just going to put a little bit on a paper towel and just quickly wipe down all of the mating surfaces where our gasket's gonna go. This takes two seconds, and it just ensures that we don't have any gasket, um, or oil rather, on our mating surfaces so that the gasket sealer can do its job. And I'm actually gonna take a quick uh, turn here, and we're not gonna use Yamabond at all. We're actually gonna use something else to seal these cases. And before I reveal what we'll be using to seal these case halves, we're going to put our dowels in. We've just got a little bit of anti-seize so that when it comes time to pull this engine apart the next time or for the next guy, it'll be nice and easy. Just a little bit is all you need. All right, so what's Mike using to seal these cases? Well, the manual actually doesn't even recommend that you use a gasket sealer. It just says to use the regular old gasket. Um, that may very well work. However, uh, for those of you that like a little bit more reassurance, like myself, you could use the Yamabon. That is definitely going to seal your cases. Um, but it's a little bit messy, and that's probably a little bit excessive. Um, I've had this stuff on hand, and I didn't even think to use it until right now. And the reason that I didn't think to use it is because I didn't realize it. Um, but this stuff is actually gas resistant, which is what you want. That's what you need in order to seal a two-stroke crankcase. Um, it's good up to 450 degrees, so we should be plenty good with this stuff. Um, and it's super easy to use. You literally shake this stuff up, spray it on both sides of the gasket or just one side. Um, a lot of times I like to use it only on one side because it holds the gasket in place and it's not necessary on the other side. And we also went to extensive measures to make sure that our cases are nice and flat. Um, if you guys watched the video, we surfaced these cases, um, and these should be perfectly good to go. We shouldn't have any leaks at all, but it is definitely nice to have a little bit of reassurance. Um, so we're just going to spray a thin layer um, on both sides of our gasket, put it in place. Um, what's nice about this, too, is when it comes time to remove the, uh, the old gasket, um, it comes off really easy, too. So this stuff is excellent, um, definitely good in cases where you only need just a thin film. So we'll go ahead, spray our gaskets throw them in place. Uh, we'll put it on uh, this half first. I actually might take these dowels and move them over to this side of the case um, and then put the gasket on this half first. And then we'll place the right half case right on top, uh, put our bolts in and we should be good to go. Now, one last thing before we go spraying our gasket, you wanna get all your bolts ready because when that stuff cures, you wanna be ready to tighten them down. So I want to go ahead and show you guys this DBC bolt kit. Um, I got a bunch of you guys sent me DMs asking uh, where, um, if I'm running stainless, a stainless steel bolt kit and where I got it. Um, so mine is from DBC Racing. It's probably the most inclusive bolt kit that you can get. There are over 600 pieces in this kit. Uh, it includes pretty much everything for your body, your frame, and it also includes the uh, case bolts as well. And that's what we're going to get out now. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And I want to show you, they have everything individually wrapped, um, packaged, so that it makes it really easy when you're assembling your stuff. So many bolts, my God. You can see right here. See, it says fuel tank, rear brake caliper, front brake line mounts. I mean, this just makes it so easy. Wheels, engine skid plate. Oh, these are so nice. They're all stainless steel rear sprocket. This is awesome. So I'm just going to go ahead and find our case bolts and then we can move on. Boom. Case bolts. Now we'll spray our gasket. Have it just laying out on some paper towels here because this stuff can be kind of messy. Make sure that this is uh, shaken up real good. We're just going to put a nice thin coat. It doesn't have to be crazy. Now this should go on without a problem, but if it doesn't, it's okay. 
we can use the crank installer. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to use the crank installer for this side too. That's no problem. This will pull the cases right together. All right, so we flipped the motor over. Um, we have our torque wrench handy. It's set to nine foot pounds and we have our stainless steel bolts all ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is just get these in place and we wanna put a little bit of anti-seize on these, just a little bit on the threads. And I'll run these down by hand first. We'll kind of go in a crisscross cross pattern and just snug them down by hand. And one thing you definitely don't want to do is try pulling your case halves together by tightening your bolts. That's a really bad idea. And now we're going to do two passes here and tighten these down to nine foot pounds. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put in our Boss Racing Billet. Uh, counterbalancer holder. Now, apparently with the 250R, when you start going into big bore applications, uh, it's pretty common that the factory holder will crack and tank your engine. So these billet ones are a little bit stronger. And this one also has some adjustment for a timing plate. Um, however, we're probably not going to utilize that feature. Regardless, uh, we're going to put a little bit of dielectric grease on this O-ring, press it into place, and then we'll put our new bolts in. All right, now I'm gonna remove this adjustable cover so that we can tap this. Use the good old rubber mallet. Now we've encountered a small problem here. So if you guys remember when I pulled this bolt out here, this bolt was snapped. Ooh, look at this. Oh, that's snapped. You can see it right there. It snapped right off. Now, I actually ordered the incorrect bolt. So you can see this bolt right here is almost the same length. They're actually the same length right now, but that's because you can see the threads go further up on this one. Um, the snapped off portion would actually make this bolt probably about this long. And um, you'll see if I drop this bolt in here, we get nothing. If we go to put it right where it's supposed to be down here, it's perfect. And that's because this hole here is the same hole where our dowel is. So it needs a little bit of a deeper bolt. So I just hopped on um, the internet to try to find an OEM one of these only to find out this is a discontinued bolt, but it's no problem. I found a company called specbolt.com and um, they do have these bolts uh, in reproduction. They look just like these and uh, they'll work perfectly. So if you're in the same predicament, definitely check out spec bolt and uh, you can get that bolt replaced. So for right now, we'll be okay. We'll put these two bolts in and we'll put our counter shaft in. And then when that bolt comes in, we'll go ahead and throw this third bolt in. Now we can put our counterbalancer in. We have this little retaining plate that goes back here. Same as those other bolts, we'll do nine foot pounds on these. And one last thing I want to do is take a new razor and cut off this excess gasket material because our cylinder will not go on flush if we leave these on here. You just want to be careful not to score up your cylinder.
All right, guys, so we got the bottom end all complete. I am super happy with the way this thing turned out. Pretty much no snags along the way, except for that one bolt that's missing. It's actually on this side, but it is basically complete. We'll be able to throw that bolt in and it's done. Um, so all we have left to do is the clutch side, the stator side. We're still waiting on our stator. Um, our ignition system from HPI, uh, not a problem. We'll be able to do that as soon as it comes in. And I have it in this trick engine stand that Tony from TLR and the guys from TRX250R.org hooked me up with. It makes the bottom end look absolutely killer and it's gonna look even more badass when we have this motor completely built in the motor stand, it's gonna look really trick. So I will have all the special tools and all of the sealants and lubricants that I use in the description below. And if you guys do decide to take this on yourself, just remember to take your time. It's really not a hard task to do. Uh, the one thing that you might have to run to the dealer for is the uh, pulling the crank in. That's the one thing. Just remember not to hit that with a mallet or a hammer. You will destroy your crank. It will be out of balance. Don't do it. And one other thing I want to stress is to use anti-seize on all your bolts, especially if you had your cases vapor blasted like I did. Um, if anybody had missed some of the last videos, the reason that these cases look so new is because I did have them vapor blasted by DBC Racing. Um, and using anti-seize is one of those things you definitely want to do after you've had it vapor blasted. All right, guys, so I'm going to wrap this video up. Remember to give me that thumbs up if you're enjoying this content. And also remember to check out my Teespring store, which is right below the video, all the proceeds. Um, for the t-shirts go to helping out the channel. So I'm going to move this engine aside and we're going to do just as promised and we're going to open up those packages that we got for Project 250R. All right, so we might as well start with this one right here because if you can't tell what's in this package, I don't know, man, you're watching the wrong channel. So this is the skid plate and man, this thing is hardcore. It is literally, this has got to be a half an inch thick. It is a half an inch thick. So this is a poly skid by DRW. Weston hooked me up with this thing. And this looks like it is extremely durable. Um, I originally wasn't gonna run a skid plate for you guys that have been following the channel. Um, this is something that I learned from you guys, even with motocross racing, it is definitely important to run a skid. Uh, so we welded our tabs back on our frame and we will be running one. So thank you, Weston. This looks awesome. I can't wait to get that on the frame after it comes back from powder coating. Oh man. All right, so I had to bring you up close here to show you what's in this box. Um, there's tons of stuff in here. This is all from DRW Performance. Um, Wes is a great guy. And if you're into Warriors, uh, you should definitely check him out. He has some really badass Warriors that make like upwards of 70 horsepower. I think the one he's working on now, which is absolutely insane for a Yamaha Warrior. Um, so this is a disc guard. So we're not gonna be running a skid plate. This is gonna protect our rear disc and dude, you kind of got to see this stuff in person to appreciate it. It is super thick. I didn't even know they made um, poly skid or poly um, disc and sprocket guards, but DRW does. Here's the sprocket guard. You guys are probably familiar with the aluminum ones, but this does the same thing. It's just poly. So I think it's a little bit lighter and the color scheme is gonna go with Project 250R really well. It's kind of like a matte black finish. And this is a chain slider. There's actually two chain sliders. Um, I think he wasn't sure which one would work with my um, Hauser swing arm. So he just included both styles. And of course, the notorious sprocket guard. This is what DRW is really known for. He included bolts in there. Oh, dude, this is awesome. I already know what the Banshee this thing is bulletproof. This is literally the best case saver that you can get for the 250R. Um, it's super, super encompassing. And the way that it sits on the case, if you like, a, it's really notorious with a lot of four wheelers and dirt bikes. If you snap a chain, um, you snap the studs where your uh, case guard holds. And uh, because of the way that this fits onto the 250R, it actually fits right into the motor. Um, like like the geometry of the motor so that basically everything is resting right up against the motor, not just the studs. Uh, you'll, you'll understand when we actually put this thing on. Um, but for those of you that know DRW, you know this is a good piece right here. All right, we've got another kind of obvious one. If you guys know what kind of Nerf bars I ordered, they're Factory 43. That's got to be what's in this box. We've been waiting forever for these things. Um, these were like the missing piece to send everything out to powder coating because these are gonna get powder coated the same color as the frame. Let's see what we got in here. Okay, um, well, first impression, 
These things are awesome. These are probably the best Nerf bars that I've ever seen. Uh, I've seen a good amount of Nerf, Nerf bars. These are uh, really nice quality. As long as they fit well, I mean, these are these are really nice. Uh, the only thing is, I think they sent me um, the hookup for 88 to 89. So uh, the guys that aren't 250R guys, the 86 and 87 have a different foot peg style than the 88 and 89. Um, they're pretty easy to note too. I'm pretty sure these are for 88 to 89 and my uh, TRX 250R is an 87. Um, hopefully the only difference is the peg mount. If that's the case, they'll probably just have to send out two of these and that wouldn't be a problem at all because we'll still be able to send this stuff out to get a powder coating um, if we can get them powder coated with this virus stuff going on. Um, but dude, these pegs are outrageous. These are like more outrageous than the coronavirus. I mean, holy shit. These things are super sharp, super aggressive, and they're super big. Uh, this has to be like 10 or 12 inches, um, which is incredibly, an incredible improvement over stock. These are awesome. So I think we will have a more in-depth look at these in another video. Uh, I actually wanted to mount them up to the frame before we send them out for powder coating because uh, that's the time to make sure that everything fits. Uh, but obviously we can't with the wrong mounting pegs. Um, so it's one o'clock right now. I can't really do anything about it. Uh, but in the morning, I'll get on the phone and uh, see what we can do about that. But um, yeah, man, I just wanted to share this stuff with you guys. I want to thank Wes for hooking me up with all this DRW stuff. I'm super excited about that. And I'm happy with the bot way the bottom end turned out. And I'm happy with the Nerf bars too. Uh, hopefully, like I said, we don't have to send everything back. It's just as easy as the pegs. So all right, guys, I appreciate you all watching again. Please give me that thumbs up. That helps me out more than you know. I appreciate all you guys. So we're going to get through this Corona stuff together, guys. Um, I'm trying to put out as many videos as I possibly can for you guys. Uh, you probably noticed I'm having a little bit of a different schedule. I'm trying to put out more uh 250R and side-by-side -side stuff because that's the stuff I've been getting the most of DMs. Uh, it seems to be the stuff that you guys really want to see the most. Um, so I'm going to help give you guys some entertainment while we're all in quarantine. And I will see you guys in the next video. I love all you guys. Peace out, and I will see you on Friday.